Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Sometimes when you look at a passage of Scripture, there is one primary message to that text, one principle that God wants us to learn. And in the Scripture that we're going to be studying today from the book of Psalms, we can say with all assurance that there's one principle, and that is this. God, when He enters into a situation, we can make it more personal, when God enters into your life, He will bring about a change. God's presence always produces a change. And the change has to do with His will being received, being achieved, being brought about. So let me ask you a question. Are you receiving God's will? Are you committed to His purposes do you want the righteous changes that god wants to bring about in your life if you are then god will use you if not you will find that god will appear distant from you and you won't experience his presence take out your bible and look with me to the book of psalms and psalm 114 now this psalm is relatively short And it's a psalm that primarily we read, and we can read this fairly quickly and discern the message. And we need to also visualize what this psalm is saying in order that we can see how God brings change into this world, into your situation, into your life. So let's begin. Psalm 14, 114 and verse 1 it begins with a reference to the exodus the children of israel being brought out of egypt and i've shared with you many times that the exodus from egypt relates to redemption that exodus took place because of passover and passover is understood as the festival of redemption messiah yeshua he was crucified not just on any day he was crucified on passover now here's a problem that we must deal with and that is this i try experiments and i ask people who are believers what day did messiah die meaning what day was his crucifixion and so many times i hear this answer good friday Well, we don't want to go off on a tangent, but the name of that day is not biblically ever called Good Friday. And yes, it was before the Shabbat, but not the seventh day Shabbat. That's an impossibility when you study the scripture and what took place in that those days. What we find is the Shabbat that Nicodemus and joseph of arimathea were hurrying to get his body into the tomb before was a high shabbat that's what the scripture says in john chapter 19 and verse 31 and we find that the next day the ladies went and they bought and prepared the spices in order to anoint his body that is to give him a proper barrier but they did not do that because they ran out of time why the sabbath was coming so we see that there's two sabbaths spoken of one had to do with nicodemus and joseph and arimathea putting his body into the tomb prior to the shabbat the high shabbat the first day of unleavened bread then the day after the first day of unleavened bread the women bought and prepared the spices the ointment but they did not go to the tomb to finish their work because 
they rested on the seventh day Shabbat. How do we know it was the seventh day Shabbat? Because we find on the first day of the week, the next day after Shabbat, this is when the resurrection took place. So what I want us to see here is we need to think according to the biblical terminology, not the traditional of of Christianity so he was not crucified on good friday there's nothing true about that he was crucified on passover and passover involves death let me say it this way passover comes something's going to die when we look at the first passover in egypt here was the choice either the lamb or the firstborn you chose if you kept the passover and you killed the lamb the lamb died but your firstborn did not if you dealt properly with the blood so there was the death of the lamb that was not sufficient there was also the requirement to deal properly with the blood the blood of the lamb we can say that about the passover lamb but even more so about the lamb of god messiah yeshua jesus christ his blood that was shed for redemption in the same way god looked at the blood of the lamb in egypt in order to pass over meaning his judgment did not fall upon that house in that same way god looks at the blood of the lamb of god messiah yeshua in order that his eternal judgment passes over an individual and does not eternally bring about death and destruction now why are we talking about passover the context look if you would to verse 1 of psalm 114 it says but set Yisrael, but set when went forth Israel from Egypt. That is the Exodus. And then we see that Israel here is parallel to Bet Yaakov, the house of Jacob. And let me simply say that Jacob is a wonderful name. It does not mean deceiver or that old English word surplanter or a cheater. The name Yaakov comes from the Hebrew verb Lakov, which means to follow after. It's a word of pursuit. So we see here that Israel went forth from Egypt and the house of Jacob from, and we have Mi'am from a people lo lo es lo es is a strange or foreign now normally we deal with that word lo es having to do with with a foreign or a different something that is not within the framework of of god something that is different outside the the parameters that god sets so once again the house of Jacob may am from a people that were foreign, different, strange. And here we have something again that does not resemble the character or the purposes of God. God brought them out from that, and that's the change. He did not keep them in the same location. He brought them into a new location. And as I've said, when we deal with redemption, There's a change in identity. That which is redeemed has a new identity. And secondly, there's going to be a change in location. Verse verse 2. And Judah became, now we have the term Judah, referring to the tribe of Judah. Judah became his sanctuary. Now, the term Judah, yes, it can relate to the tribe. But that word Yehuda in Hebrew represents throwing something, giving thanks, throwing praise. So we see here that that something happened. We see that God dwells in thanksgiving, in praise. So if we want God's presence in our life, we want to experience God, we do so by thanking God and praising God. And what's parallel to Yehuda? Israel. And Israel became his. And we have the word, most Bibles will say dominion. I have no problem with that. It's the word memshalah, 
in the plural memshalot memshala is government it has to do with ruling over it's in the plural here to speak about an abundant rule and so we see that israel becomes his rule god uses israel in order to rule over what will find in the future his kingdom that kingdom was supposed to be what israel was called to embrace and demonstrate in the past but israel rejected those things that god provided in order that they would become god's dominion in this world they rejected that and therefore we see something else look now to to verse verse three it speaks now about god fulfilling his purpose what did he want to do he wanted to take the people out of egypt and he wanted to bring them into the land of canaan now why the land and we say in hebrew canaan that word canaan relates to submissiveness and so he wanted to bring them to a place where they would submit now let's just pause for a moment as i say frequently let's make this personal let's apply this to our life we see a paradigm and with what god did with the jewish people the hebrews the israelites how he redeemed them he brought them into a new place a place where they could submit this is what redemption does redemption gives me the ability to submit so let me ask you a question are you submitting to god this is what you were saved to do you are a new creation you have been born again you have been regenerated and all those terms whether we're speaking about regeneration being born again becoming that new creation that new man whatever term you use they all have something in common we are new or different for the purpose of submission so realize if you're not submitting and here's the problem most of the time what we hear frequently and what's popular today within christianity is that god is going to submit to our desires he is going to give us our and we hear the word destiny and what it really is is a fleshly vision for one's life we call that my destiny we call that a dream well by far what we want what we desire what we believe is our destiny is not in any way connected to the will of god we have to have that new mind we have to truly become that new creation whereby we can receive the mind of christ in order that we think properly and receive the truth what is that that god would take his desires and give them to us that spirituality when the desires of god become my desires that's what messiah meant when he said not my will but thy will be done he's saying that as an example to us of what it means to serve god and surrender to his will look at verse 3 it says and the sea saw and we could say fled now i believe here the sea that they're talking about is yamsuf the red sea which parted for the children of israel and then we have ha yarden that is the jordan the jordan did what it also turned backwards that's literally what it says all of these things whether we're talking about the sea the sea that fled or the jordan river that turned back it all involves something and remember that principle that we began with change because of god's purposes because of god's presence in his people when his people that were in a covenantal relationship with him when they came and god was with them when they came to yamsuf the red sea what happens the sea responded the sea was changed same thing when the children of israel that generation that that was born in the wilderness not those that came out of egypt but a new generation very important term prophetically that next generation or the children they came to the jordan river and the jordan river was turned back 
And we're going to see another description of change. Look now to, to verse 4 where it says, The mountains danced. Now, this is, and if you look at the rabbinical commentaries, they will say it speaks of a change that, that one cannot visually see, but in the spiritual realm. And that is that the mountains danced, and they dance as rams. So we see, and this idea here is of joy, of happiness, of a visible response to the will of God being fulfilled. So let me ask you, when God moves and his will is accomplished, do you respond with joy and gladness? And is that joy and gladness for the will of God visible to others that that you are displaying or hopefully that people can see in your life? We see here, this is what the scripture is referring to. So the mountains, they danced, and they danced as rams, and hills as benetzon, meaning the children or the offspring of, of the flock, so we could say lambs. So we see that the hills also dance like, like lambs, meaning simply. A lamb who is happy, it's also reflected in his behavior. Verse verse 5. We now have a question. What to you, the sea? Meaning this. What was this to the sea? Why did the sea respond in this way that it would flee? And here again, the answer is submissiveness to God's will. When... The children of Israel came. God had a plan. Let me say that differently. God had a purpose. God wanted something to take place. And the sea responded to that. The sea changed its normal behavior in order to submit to the purpose of God. Here's the change that we need to learn. Faith spiritual maturity is when we change in order to participate to agree with the purposes of god that is what spirituality is about that is what the anointing brings about in a person's life it's just that simple so what is this to you O C, that you should turn back and keep reading the second part of verse five the jordan that you should turn backwards and here again a change a responsive change to what god wanted to bring about the jordan river turned back why in order for the children of israel to cross the jordan and to take possession of the land so we see nature submitted to it and here's what we know nature tends to be much more submissive than humanity humanity struggles with obedience and submissiveness and more often than not we see that humanity chooses rebelliousness chooses sin here we find that nature is obedient and a very important truth let me go off on a brief tangent But if you study the prophecy of Jonah, that is Jonah, you find that everyone in that book of Jonah, that prophecy, everyone obeyed God except for one person. And who is that? We look, we see the sailors responded properly. The sea, the wind responded properly. The king of Nineveh and the people responded properly. We see the gourd, that plant, and the worm also responded obediently. And also the sun came out. Everything, everyone and everything in the book of Jonah submitted, obeyed, participated in the will of God. The only one that didn't and was rebellious and wanted to flee from the presence of God was Jonah. And we learn a principle there. What did he want to do? 
he wanted to flee from god's presence and here's the takeaway for us every time hear that every time that you disobey you refuse to submit you you rebel and understand it's a choice if you and hear this carefully if you are a believer let me say it differently if you have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb the lamb of god messiah Yeshua, you're a new creation and your new nature is to submit sin no longer rules over you you have been delivered from sin you've been brought out of a worldly mentality that's rooted in sin just like the children of israel came out of egypt where we began in verse 1 and now we have been created anew born again regenerated however you want to say it in order that we agree with the things of god so every time every time that we don't agree understand that is rebelliousness that is not poor me i can't help myself no you can you have the spirit of god in you you have an anointing god's provision his power has been given to you so every time we don't submit every time we disobey every time we rebel it is sin it is pure refusing the right thing to do we know it but yet we rebel against it look on to to verse verse six says here again same message the mountains they danced as rams and the hills as the offspring of the flock what do we see a repetition why for the purpose of emphasis if the hills and the mountains if they responded how much more so should we what are hills and mountains dirt and rocks and such but they responded obediently they recognized and submitted to the purpose of god god's plan so this is emphasized for you and me to teach us what we should do as we're in a much superior position being a new man a new creation being born again being regenerated well let's look at at verse 7 why did the hills why did the mountains and we could say why did the sea and the jordan river respond in this way well we're going to find they did so verse 7 me lifne adon from before the master now here again the word is adon it's not the term the lord in the traditional sense yute vafe it's not elohim god but we see the term adon meaning master and this is a word of position they recognize who the master is and therefore because he is a in he is indeed adon the lord therefore we should respond our life should reflect that this is what the scripture is saying it's not difficult to grasp this this passage look at verse 7 from before the master and what happens well we have a debate among the scholars on how to translate this next word huli now this word can mean uh dance it can mean tremble it is a word of of response now it's interesting because as i've shared with you many times I'm looking at a book here and we find that this is a book that has the hebrew text that's all that's there the biblical text for the book of psalms but underneath the biblical text we have words to help us understand the the biblical words and they're also hebrew words and here when we look at this word huli which most english bibles will say uh tremble so before the lord the earth trembled but 
it can also when i look here it has the word yotzer which means before the master and in the rabbinical mind this word chuli would be the creator of the earth or the world now they recognize that he's master in what he was able to do that he is creator now whether we look at it from the creator of the world or we take the traditional christian view that it's simply this word huli has to do with with dancing or or responding in a outwardly in a visible way to the master of the world it also says before the god and i like this the god of jacob now do you think if jacob meant the deceiver the cheater it would be speaking about the god of cheating and deceiving of course not this is a god who pursues he follows after and he's looking that which is blessable he blesses and that which needs to be punished he curses that which gives life he gives life to that which brings about death which is related to sin god brings about eternal judgment that's what the scripture is saying here let's look at one last verse verse 8 and then we'll conclude here we speak about a change he is the one that changes and the next word is the word hatsur the rock so god can take a a rock now usually when we think of a rock a rock is a rock you can throw things at it you can can beat it but it usually stays a rock or you can break it into pieces but it doesn't change what it is a rock is a rock or a rock becomes pieces of that same rock but notice what it says here what happens the one who turns he turns the rock into a gone mine what's a gone mine a gone mine is a lake of water let me ask you can you do that can you take a rock and and change it into a lake of water now remember something water in the scripture frequently frequently relates to blessing it relates to a cleansing that brings about a change where that which is cleansed can be blessed and so what we see here is this rock becomes a blessing and then we see in the last part chalamish chalamish is a flint stone a type of stone known as flint a flint stone and we see that a flint stone becomes a spring of water so it becomes also a change now a flint is a dry piece of of rock we know that flint frequently is used in order to to start a fire so very dry not something that has any moisture in it but god with god all things are possible so again when we look at this wonderful psalm psalm 114 what's the message if you are redeemed you are going to be changed and that change is going to produce submissiveness and obedience and that submissiveness and obedience is going to cause you to participate in the things of god and in doing so what's going to be the outcome god's going to bring blessing and god's able to do that why he can take a rock and turn it into a lake he can take a flint stone and turn it into a spring god is able to bless and he will bless those who are responsive to his word well i'll close with that until next week shalom from israel well we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week.
May the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Thank you.